material development and things are being worked on on the nanoscale, so you're having kind of solar thread or piezoelectric thread, or I was just I started a conversation with a carbon nanotubule manufacturer, which can actually become a power source as well. Um, as those are integrated directly into the garment itself, where the power source is the textile, literally is the textile, the material of it, um, then you don't think of it as, here's the active electronic part of the garment, and here's the textile part. And so when people can stop to kind of sort of disassociate those two things, or and they, can, they can become one, um, you know, one way of thinking about the stretch is, is you know, part of how it gets powered, uh, you're no longer wearing a circuit, you're wearing a, a kind of a smart textile, in the same way that we think about smart textiles now, which have, you know, metal, silver, for those kinds of things. So that's kind of how, for me, um, in talking to kind of future audiences, that perceptual thing is really important about shifts of scale. Much of what you do has to do with bioorganisms and algae, and how do you cor incorporate those? So I, the algae, my algae company has nothing to do with my textiles right now. <laughs> Um, but I do look at um, a lot of different, bio I teach a course on biomaterials, and um, it is for architects mostly, but we, there's just some work around, around textiles, and I think that, you know, there's very exciting things going on in the work of Suzanne Lee and Bio Couture, which is basically using the process of, by how you make kombucha and growing it into a textile. Oh, kombucha, I'm sorry, what is that? Oh, well, kombucha is a kind of drink, but you're really just, it's a, you're using basically a bacteria, you're creating a bacterial cellulose. So kombucha is the, the bacteria itself that kind of, you know, grows this, this liquid. Um, but it's sort of looking at the active processes of microbes and having some sort of control structure around that and to turn it into a, a kind of textile. Um, there's also a lot of amazing work going on with things like, you know, spider sill um, and that kind of thing and how you can create all different kinds of structural weaves um, naturally. So to me, this sort of speaks a lot about creating textiles in new sustainable ways. So using natural processes, well, what animals do, what, um, you know, what, what microbes want to do um, to turn them into the right, the right kinds of structures that we want. It's happening in architecture too. So my, things like mycelium, which is a fungus that you, know, you can make, um, you can basically grow your own bricks, they digest sawdust and hardly. Thinking out five years or even a little more if you want, what new wearable products or capabilities do you foresee coming to market that are enabled by smart materials? Okay, yeah, I see this evolution of uh, sensors becoming smaller and smarter, I mean, using less power. Somehow, somewhere, we find the solution for power. I mean, we've been looking at energy harvesting for quite some time. Actually, last year, we did a fairly thorough study about energy harvesting from the body. And the conclusion was, yeah, there's a lot of talk about it, but the amount of energy that you get and what you can use from it is probably minimal at best, and the use case scenarios have not written very well. But I'm hoping that changes and that evolves, right? And as a result, then, uh, particularly what we wear and or what we want to put on the body becomes much more discreet, or much more vicious, and we don't know uh, it's there. It's as invisible as possible. And that would give us tremendous amount of benefits in terms of knowing ourselves, the whole quantified or qualified self, uh, monitoring, tracking what we do, and as a result, leading much more healthier, better lives, communicating better, better with each other. And then there's a huge amount of health benefits also. Um, when we first started out with Textronics, our first uh, focus was medical, because a lot of this could be used in telehealth, telemedicine, particularly here with the, the way the healthcare cost is going on, and also in uh, third world countries where there is a need for a lot more healthcare, but it is not available. So I see that actually evolving and growing a lot with uh, very better tech. And then there is obviously these things that we don't even imagine today. Because of this technology, you just see a lot more things happening. So, so that is actually the most interesting part, is like what more we can think about it now that's going to happen in the next five years. But that's certainly going to continue to grow and evolve for us. I think really I, what I'm most excited about, and, and we saw it a lot with the testing of the check light, is just cha the changing behavior with wearable electronics. Um, people making more proactive health decisions because electronics are uh, becoming you know, a part of their daily experience. So, you know, we saw especially testing with the youth market, who I think really that's the market that's going to be embracing these new types of technologies. And, you know, making it part of their daily life. I mean, you look at even seatbelts, like my parents' generation, 
you know, they never wore seatbelts, and now a kid gets into the car, it's the first thing they do. And I think wearable electronics are just going to be a part of really that, um, you know, moving forward um, culture, moving forward, and kids are really the ones who are going to be embracing these things. So with us, with the check light, you know, noticing how kids on the field were avoid, didn't want to be pulled out of the game, so to avoid triggering a light, they were keeping their head out of impact and kind of bracing differently for impact than they were before when it was a more invisible problem where they didn't necessarily have data or information in real time about what was happening to their head. And that's safer play, that's smarter play, you know, that's really the future of contact sports. And it was through wearable technology, you know, through real-time data that actually, you know, gave them that lesson in real time. And it was very exciting for us to see in something that we really didn't anticipate. Um, so as electronics are getting thinner and more conformal to the human body and can be powered for longer periods of time and they just become part of our daily experience, it will be interesting to see the approach we take to our own healthcare. We could ignore things before and now we can't necessarily ignore them.